my uh, my topic is graduate attitude for physical therapy so uh, currently i am working as a patient educator come researcher at lim hans bengaluru my terminal degree is post doctoral fellowship in physical therapy so my entitled of the topic is gap it it means graduate attitude for physical therapy so first who is identify this educational strategy in the globally that i am going to describe so introduction professor and dr william g spady he is basically psychologist and he is a legend icon in the field of transformational outcome based education he is a father and innovator and ideologist founder outcome based education he identified introduced ope education strategy in the year 1988 the, uh, his objective to help the educator teaching faculty and educationalists to understand the concept of outcome based education Hello, how sir. it can help in maximizing the next slide yes, about uh, the educational approach that is bloom taxonomy the bloom taxonomy it has there are five components one is acute that is a stand for analyze apply and c stand for create evaluate understand and remember the third one is learning outcome there are five components which lying on this area that is mainly assessment tool learning outcome curricular coherence curriculum map and program outcomes assessment tool we are using for soap s o a p subjective objective assessment and treatment plan the third slide about graduate attribute for physical therapy the graduate attribute for physical therapy that is simply we call as three component which lying in this area that is k s p k stand for knowledge s stand for self another s stand for system of self care another s for society the third one is patient and uh, the last one is physiotherapy profession then self the self which consists of there are two components one is internal and external the internal component empathy compassion honesty integrity altruism resilience importance of healthcare reflective practice the external we call we called as self awareness knowledge skill own learning needs appraisal performance uncertainty time management organizational skill management emotional professional support own personal spiritual the system of healthcare system of healthcare how it is working in the physiotherapy profession become superior role and expertise of all health professional and how they work in teams to deliver healthcare the second one is to respect other healthcare professional communicate effectively with them within the working as a leader this component belongs to rehabilitation the rehabilitation which consists of there are six domains which lying in this area only for physiatry physiotherapy occupational therapy orthotics and speech pathology and audiology the last one is psychology and social work so in uh, in india the system of health care which is regulated by ministry of health and family welfare the ministry of health and family welfare given the guidelines how to manage the pandemic situation how to work the allied health professional the guidelines which is given by ministry of health under ministry of health there is a physiotherapy uh, regulating body which is operating from india that is called as indian association of physiotherapy they given the guidelines to manage to apply the evidence based protocol to minimize the symptom and maximizing the function then society how we can we have to identify the physiotherapy is a uh, it is a exercise medicine which will help to which will help to uh, minimizing symptom and maximizing function so the therapist what they are doing they are working from the uh, uh, superior to internal structure that is external uh, organ to internal organs they are working so mainly cell to skin they are working and they are working the population of especially pediatrics to geriatrics they are taking care of the entire system which will help to maximizing their function the knowledge about this profession they should have some basic knowledge about how the muscles origin 
insertion and nerve supply how it is functioning before studying the uh, physical therapy student they must have some basic knowledge about anatomy physiology pathology microbiology cognacy this will help to identify which system get uh, deficit or which is system mal dysfunction it can be identified and it can be corrected through physical therapy approach then uh, they are uh, physical therapists go to our study uh, after completion of uh, undergraduate they will become movement scientist they will enhance their knowledge to apply that knowledge to maximize the function then patients the patients they are treating in different especially neurological system patients psychiatry uh, deficit patients and the musculoskeletal patients along with the community community settings those who are facing uh, long term uh, illness which will be uh, uh, managed by physical therapy approach then physiotherapy professor physiotherapy means it is a systematic method of assessing cardio respiratory musculoskeletal neurological including pain and the psychosomatic disease to prevent illness by the way of manual therapy and the physical ability so the physiotherapy profession is a significant component it will help to assess as well as treatment for the management as well as diagnostic both it can help to identify the patient's issues as well as it will help to maximize the function so the graduate attitude those who completed they they have to undergo for post graduation training the post graduation training there are different specialty which is available in globally the first branch is neurophysical therapy the second one is psychiatry the third one is musculoskeletal physiotherapy the fourth one is sports physiotherapy community physical therapy the women's health and disaster management these are all the specialty which is uh, lying in the supporting to the field of physiotherapy those who wants to pursue the higher studies they can undergo this training they will enhance the knowledge they will take the uh, this training once they took the training they will become the master trainer in the field of the particular specialty then ethics what are all the ethics the therapist should follow the first one is time management when they are treating the patients the time they have to punctual sincere loyal when they when they find the problem they have find they have to given the specified time that time they have to visit the patient they have to advise the patient what kind of problem you have how you will manage through physical therapy approach the physical therapy also called as that is functional rehabilitation so this time management they have to keep up very punctual manner tolerance the patients having different mental health issues post injury or post uh, any deficit they used to develop some sort of mental health issues the mental health issues which is managed through physical therapy that is called as there are few techniques which we used to perform to the patient one is pmr technique progressive muscle relaxation autogenic training visualization by feedback there are various technique which will help to relaxation to the patients another one is team work the team work which is very very significant role the physiotherapy also it is a team work uh, it is uh, it is a uh, integral component of the rehabilitation so the integral component of rehabilitation mainly there are rehabilitation team will be there under the rehabilitation physiotherapist and uh, other allied health professional like occupational therapy orthotic and prosthetic we have to coordinate with uh, what kind of progress we need to identify and we used to teach to the patients that is our primary responsibility the th third one is interpersonal skills so the patient uh, we have to maintain our friends and the colleagues and our superior we have to maintain very good relationship with our friends and the those who are working as a leader we should having good rap up and interpersonal skill that will enhance to uh, give the good quality of the patient's life another one is physical health and fitness we ourselves should be role model for this uh, profession so we should keep our health should be fit fit to work so we should, when the patient see our health should be uh, uh, very good health and we are able 
to give the good quality to the services that will enhance the quality of life so finally the take home message what i am telling this uh, in india in india this program which is given by ugc university grant commission so each state they have the uh, medical state funded university which is offering this program so those who wants to pursue this skill based training they have to undergo for four and a half years this four and a half years which consists of there are various subjects they have to undergo one is anatomy physiology pathology microbiology cardio respiratory then x electrotherapy exercise therapy there are various subjects is there so each university they are conducting in different uh, uh, syllabus and they are offering the examination in different modes so the, the government of india is seriously looking to identify this issue they wanted to regulate the curriculum should be uniform in globally as well as they wanted to follow who guidelines as well as they wanted to implement entire world should be uniform syllabus and curriculum especially they are planning to implement in the india so this is a therapeutic form of exercise which will help to uh, minimizing symptom and maximizing function it also help to improve overall health well being livelihood wisdom so this will enhance Once it is a skill-based training, so the skill-based training when they are applied to the patients, they have to identify the diagnosis, what they have, on the basis we can teach the patient how to uh, improve your quality of life, how to manage your functional skill, how to improve your mobility, how to improve your joint flexibility, how to improve your gait, how to improve your balance, how to improve your coordination. how to improve your posture those activities will help to improve the overall health and well being of the patient hello hello yes we are listening yes sir so i wanted to conclude so the entire india we are planning the ugc university grant commission they wanted to implement this syllabus and curriculum in uniform manner and they wanted to uh, 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 give the guidelines to the students this is one of the integ uh, integral component of the rehabilitation then those who undergo this training they will become the master trainer in the field of physiotherapy they will give the good quality to the patient especially neurologically those who are suffering like stroke population if you take in the stroke stroke is a sudden onset of focal neurological deficit lasting for more than 24 hours duration the term refers to stroke so the I, in clinically we divided into three category acute subacute and chronic so the acute condition what kind of exercise which will help to improve the critical area to non critical area how we can help so with the ventilator support some of the physical therapy exercise especially deep breathing exercise some of the ventilator support then suctioning along with the uh, cardiopulmonary approaches so that will enhance the patient to improve the lung capacity so that lung capacity which is improved through some of the uh, in situ spirometer along with the uh, uh, arm crank ergometer bicycle ergometer these are all the activity which will help to improve the uh, lung capacity the second one is i am discussing about so head injury patients the head injury patients uh, frequently the, due to uh, accident they used to develop some sort of uh, uh, what do you call some sort of head injury so the brain lesions may develop suppose the brain lesion in the right side the patient used to develop left side weakness especially left side arm and uh, left side uh, lower extremity which will become the weakness so some of the therapeutic exercise the therapeutic exercise which consists of there are five component one is zero no muscle contraction uh, two is uh, flicker of full range of movement with equalizing gravity two three is full range of movements against gravity four is full range of movements against gravity with resistance to so one is normal condition according to the muscle power we are expertized to treat in the muscle so the muscle what is the uh, uh, strength 
uh, we can quantify the strength through this uh, scale that is called as MCR, Medical Research Council. They have given the own scale, that scale which will help to identify especially how much muscle strength is there that is indicating. So, some of the therapeutic gates, the therapeutic gates mainly for walker, uh, then six, then tripod cane, axillary crutches. There are various uh, walking aids which will help to improve the joint range, improve the mobility, improve the functional ability that will enhance. So overall, these are all the things which is uh, guided and supervised by some of the experienced therapists under their guidelines if they are approaching. So it will enhance the overall quality of the patients. So another thing is the balance. So there is a balance issue, especially geriatrics. The geriatrics population, uh, once uh, they are suffering like uh, dementia, they are suffering like movement disorder, Parkinson's, they are suffering uh, like stroke. So all those things, the end is that they lose the loss of balance, they lose the loss of walking skill, they lose the loss of posture. So maximum they used to come in the wheelchair mode. Our approach which will help to make the patient to independent through this walking aids or assistive device which will help to promote to quality of life that so the in indian uh, indian settings or indian context what they are planning they wanted to create uniform syllabus and curriculum to follow entire india according to the who guidelines they already implemented but in the different states india having multicultural uh, approach is that so different state they have different universities they are giving the different uh, syllabus curriculum so the government of india already they made a new education policy this education policy they wanted to conduct uniform syllabus uniform curriculum uniform examination those who pass out they can become the master in the physical therapy field that's i wanted to conclude I think my time is over, sir. Yes, sir. Your time is. Uh, we, uh, if you want to wrap up, please take one minute or something, and please wrap it over, so we can move on to the next speaker. So this is. Uh, yes, I wanted to conclude. So this profession is one among the noble profession. This profession, if you are uh, taking the uh, uh, challenging, because it is a challenging profession, you are going to apply some of the therapeutic protocol that protocol which will help to maximize their function mainly the brain lesion do you know the brain lesion cerebral cortex that is motor motor cortex if they are uh, disturbed or any disturbances which leads to affect the entire muscular system so the muscle may become impaired so once the muscle become impaired the patient may be wheelchair bounded so this therapeutic protocol which will help to make the patient to independent and it makes the patient to socially acceptable and it makes the patient for uh, stay, uh, staying in the hospital less time. Those things, so uh, it, the, and it is a demand. In doctor, India, Dr. K. Thangwal. It is a very demand profession. Excuse me, doctor. Yes. Sorry for interrupting. Your time is yes, almost sir. up and you don't have any Q&A. So you can yes. just stop your session yes, right sir. now and transfer it to ma'am. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, also, sir, please mute yourself. Now, ma'am, you can continue. Sorry for interruption. Yes. Hey, ma'am, we can't hear you. So you are now hearing me? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Now I can hear you. You can continue. Okay. Sorry for interruption. Oh, that's okay. Uh, this is my... So I'm sharing my slides. I think it is visible. Okay. So uh, good day, everyone. And I'm Professor Dr. Hasin Anupama Azari. I'm the director of Center for Biomedical Science and Engineering in the Inter United International University. 
And I'm also acting as executive member of the Asia Pacific region for the Organization for Women in Science for the Developing World in Italy and Secretary General for the Asia Oceania Federation of Organization for Medical Physics. As well as the, I have a, work, uh, a society, that's the Alu Bhuvan Trust, I work in their Secretary Generals. So we, you know that's in Bangladesh and other South Asian country, this subject, medical physics, it is for mainly for the cancer. Then directly it is relevant to the patient treatment. So it is a, a very practical applications as well as biomedical engineering. It is as well also the very, uh, you know, in COVID-19 we have gone there. So everyone is looking for the biomedical engineer for the ventilators in Bangladesh and also in the South Asian region subjects. So I'm going to the next slide. So here I will uh, go quickly because the time is already uh, very short now because we have started late. So you know the introduction and how we have done the syllabus because um, in for medical physics and biomedical engineering, I'll show these things. We have started a center. I was a 20 years academic teaching university in another uh, previous university. So I have just joined in this university and opened a center for biomedical science and engineering, which will offer some uh, master's degree in medical physics and bachelor's degree in biomedical engineering. So in other countries, like for the outcome-based education, our education helps urge for the only base levels. So I have had previous experience in my previous university for the OBA syllabus. Now I have done here also medical physics and medical engineering syllabus. And this is of medical physics for the cancer treatment. So it is directly related to the relations. And if you are the secretary general of uh, uh, this uh, Asian, Asian regions, one side, the many developing countries and mixed up with Australia and other countries. So considering this, there is a balance of our syllabus for the outcome-based learning. So yeah, just a great year. So we work actually the physical and mathematical and science laws in our, the medical applications, and it works for radiotherapy, imaging, lasers, and physiotherapy equipment. We work actually on the cancer treatment in radiation oncology, in radiotherapy, medical physics. We work in the, for the thyroid cancer in nuclear medicine. We also work for the in any radiation related and ionizing and non-ionizing like MRI, ultrasound, uh, computer tomography, x-ray. And of course, these are, there are many hazards. So we also teach them about the radiation safety. And when we talk about the biomedical engineering, you see here that's the, there, we know there are many, many subjects. Uh, it can be used in a diagnostic, prosthetics, device, therapies, drug development, many things. And these are the multidisciplinary subject. And you will see in here, this syllabus, uh, in these slides, you see that some of the, here on the right box, there is a, some of the overlapping of the medical physics and biomedical engineering. So there are the common some uh, topics and courses that are commonly aligned to these groups. So, so these are two are joined together to open these courses. Here is that there are many things, materials, biomechanics, biosensor, biological analysis. This. So now we come to the outcome-based education. So what is this? So we, we know that uh, uh, when we pass the honors or, or honors or master's degree, the, when the direct go to the hospitals, when they go to the hospitals, they, they can do nothing at the practical base because we have to uh, analyze the, the patients and we have to make some planning for giving the radiation. So it is a very much should be related, very practical base and analytical and creative based subject and very super specialist subject. So this is the very important that what actually we need. And according to that, that program education should be according to that align. The syllabus must be with the country demand as well as the new update technology, what is there demanding. So here you, you see that the, when we have a syllabus, then we have must course, there is a, some courses. So when we say that we have given our, we are the facilitator, when we give our teaching to the learners, 
then they, there will be some courses, some content. When there is a content, of course, they should know about the content. What will be the output of the content? That will be the course learning outcome. And when the course learning outcome after graduations, what actually our goal, the upper one, that's the program educational objectives. And these educational objectives, of course, must be aligned with the vision and mission. So here we know that the learning outcomes, learning outcomes, there are different domains, cognitive, affective, and psychomotor skill. Actually, cognitive actually really uh, coincide with the intellectual side of the learning, and effective is the deals with the interest, attitude, and values. And psychomotor or skill this is a motor skill, which is mainly uh, related to the physical coordination. So in case when we are in the lower order, we are actually in the lower order in my, our country, so we are going to be higher order. That means only we are doing on the knowledge, theory-based knowledge, only the receiving and sometimes just being, uh, responding only in like Bloom's taxonomy in learning phase or uh, uh, the understanding phase, but what about the above higher order things? That means we have to evaluate, we can synthesis, we can organize, we can articulate and decide. So for this reason, we, we need to list what we actually we need. Here is the just same things that one each course has a learning outcome, each course is a learning outcome, and this learning outcome goes to the additional objective outcomes and then goes to the industry students very well and also the, may go for the and other professional bodies. So these things we are doing, this is the actually is a the looping loop is something so important. So you see, what are the assessment tools? When we do these programs, we must who are already first and working there. So that is we need to do the alumni survey. We need to do employee surveys. We need to ask the stakeholder, IQAC, and what is the outcome? So how are we measure? We measure through survey. So these are the surveys we can do. And this outcome must be their 3 D one is not technical and soft skill. In the medical physics classes only 14 weeks, our mid semester two weeks and final examination three weeks. We have a, a though it is a master's course, but according to international syllabus, as it is a multidisciplinary and patient based and medical based. Uh, provided by the International Academic Energy Agency. So it is a little bit different from other courses in Bangladesh and other university also, I think in other countries who are actually here as a keynote speaker. So you see here our core course 44 optional capstone and thesis project, this one. So published when uh, university has established so uh, the vision of the uh, uh, university. And according to the alignment of the vision, we have made the vision of our program because if this is now that the crisis in medical physical, for the, we are working in a team, in the medical team, and this is a non-medical subject, but is an allied health science. And we do this education, not for my country and also the South Asia region scientifically and produce and technically medical physics graduates and the mission is we are as we are in the side so we have to maintain the world health organization criteria how many demanding of the medical physicists in radiotherapy and diagnostic radiology and initiate the collaboration with other universities uh, we are going to through all the lines but the, the thing is so you see that when the vision of our program, missions of our program, then we come for the, what, what we are doing the program, that will be educational objectives. And this educational object is not only one, it can be many more, many more, but we have to keep in mind when we'll end this program or on, on one semester or one uh, batch will come out after 
two years, we must get that this each educational objective has been fulfilled. We have to monitor and we have to evaluate it. So these are the things very important because this is not only the written phase. You have we have to see that whether we actually cover this program educational objectives. And these objectives, when come this to fulfill these objectives, there must be an outcome. And this outcome is uh, actually according to the Bloom taxonomies, we use that, what are the bar we are using, the application of the knowledge, applying the knowledge, understanding and evolution of the knowledge, develop to the ability to apply the methodology of this scientific theory and inquiry in the medicine peoples and demonstrated the scientific arguments like this. So here you see, we have a university mission. This is the university mission, and this is the PO. So we have to align first whether our PEO will align with the EON. Also, PEO will align with the PM, that means program missions. So we have uh, many courses. So you see there is a 21 uh, courses, maybe four, five, six outcome, post learning outcome. And this post learning outcome is it must be here is there are many course and these are the course must be aligned which each course is aligned with different maybe one course with maybe covered only one program learning outcome one course maybe two or three or maybe a whole the, what you have uh, given maybe eight program learning outcome one course may be covered all the eight so according to that the content of the syllabus and according to the course we have to very methodically uh, mapping these things and this is very very important for the outcome based educations so here you say i'm just giving one example that's a uh, course title is anatomy and physiology which is only applicable for the medical physics because this is not a medicine doctors so you see we need to know the course learning organization of the human body function and mechanics how they are working how they are think so in here uh, uh mr musa please uh tell me because i'm not uh, looking like my chat box whether it is time is up or not okay so here, uh, anatomical landmarks, how anatomy, physiological, and medical fields work in for the cancer treatment. So when for each course learning, you know, here the many topics. For each topics, there is a specific outcome. We have divided the according to the topics, the specific outcome. And this is specific outcome, how to do this, our teaching strategy. We, we can have a traditional teaching strategy. So we can do in many ways because now we can do the through group discussion, group assignment, reading assignment, demonstration, lecture, PowerPoint presentation, even the self study. So how we can uh, do do our lesson plan to have this specific outcome for each content and overall, moreover, for the, each course and overall for the each program. So we can, what are the method tools we'll be using? What are the techniques we will be using for the assessment? So here, here, these are the tables where we can have given for all courses. Maybe it is a five course. If it for five course, we have to given the lesson plan. So here you see that this is the traditional class study. So how the, we are the teachers just reading and there's a note materials limited library sources so it's a time consuming and low quality so what do we need we need effective and efficient learning so we, when we do the effect effective learning you see here so we have to do this we go to the reality we go to the we have to do the dynamic and interactive so this this we are now would like to do we should not be one way speaker there will be both interactive session so we must go to the practical sessions and how they are really applied their theoretical and practical knowledge to the in the for the medicine in my case for the patients so here uh, this is the bsc programs it's also 19 weeks according to the we have is a 140 Credits, it is eight semester means four years. So it is also in it, it, as it is uh, engineering. So it is must be followed by developed by board of accreditation engineering and technical education manuals. So here you see that's the uh, same thing. We must have a this program have a vision, is the mission and PEO. So 
the thing is i must i will repeat this thing this is a very important we just write it write it this obvious about but it's not in a book and it should not be keep it only for the four years and it's going on going on we have to see whether and this every course teachers is doing their learning lesson plan to fulfill this hpeo which is mapping which is submitted and which is assigned to them here when we in as it is a biomedical engineering course so there is a washington's uh, criteria that PLO one should be an engineering knowledge, problem analysis. If they can be designed, they can investigate. They can use the model tools and environment sustainability is very important. And at least they are applying the ethical principle or they can function effectively as an individual. The communication, they should be effective and they can demonstrate their knowledge and understanding to manage the projects and must be it is a lifelong learning. So these are the program learning outcomes. So when we go to the program learning outcome, so same thing we do the what will be the university missions and vision. And here, yeah, sorry. So you see here, so this is a course code and our course name. So we, we have to first map in this, this course, introduction to biomedical, how, how this all the maybe PLO one, PLO three like this. So when we go to here, the introduction to medical biomedical engineering. So we have to see that which PLO, this PLO, we have to chalk out from their contents of the courses, which PLO is, is as aligned. Same thing, then this PLO is goes to the program education. This is more bigger. So he this this PLO, which one covering is PEO, and this PO, which is covered this program missions, and this PM, and this also the program vision. So this is the way we are have done the syllabus and this is the course outline this is the lesson plan same things how we are doing my teaching strategy what are the tools we are using how we are assessing and what from this only for only this content what will be the specific outcome i didn't show my thing sorry i didn't put it but also the when we prepare the questions then of course for this content we have to know that's one which area of the blue taxonomy this question will cover it may be in a, a application based it may be analytical based it may be evaluative based or only remembering phase so we also mentioned that which question if, if one question has three parts or four parts each part of the question which is aligned to the uh, application that means quality index one or two or three One, if you think institution, teacher, and they are the learner. So this learner, these three things are together, and we need a something very, very experienced learning and technology enhanced learning for the outcome based education. And you see here, there is a very enriched learning environment all over the world. So only just Google's many things we can see, and there is a, they can also have a chance for the self study. Though in my country, self study is not the countable part for the UGC, but self study also are good things in Europe and other countries, which include a good credit marks because everybody should have given them chance to make them analysis how how what is their capability for self study and technology and has spreading and there of course there are so many open resources ultimately what is this this classroom educations this practical educations because we are doing the practicals in the directly to the hospitals this all the things come excuse me ma'am sorry for interrupting yes excuse me ma'am sorry yes. for interrupting your time is almost up okay so i have only one slide questions. only one slide 
okay okay, okay. okay so there is okay. a highly effective education effective self health care service and reduce death the most important death threat should be reduced from cancer and other disease which are directly related to the medical physician biomedical engineering so we are all the here for healthcare facilities is not so much good in LMI, middle income countries, and also the developing countries. So these subjects are very important for the outcome based on education so that they can directly help to the patient's development. Thank you. Thank you to all. Okay, well, ma'am, you have got some questions. I am pasting in the Zoom chatting box. So please answer them. Okay, ma'am. Hello. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me? Okay. Chat box. Yes. Have you uh, pasted the question? I didn't see it now. Yes, ma'am. I have pasted. Check your chatting box. I see why. Okay. Okay, yes. That the my question is one. That's the what are the challenges I have faced designing the OB curriculum for medical practices and how you have handled it. The thing is when I design this syllabus, is a very the main challenging is to go every because when we are working in the hospitals, so when we go to the hospitals administration. Um, how they are, what, what they are needing, and also the vendors, the updated technology, the equipment is coming. So we have to know the very good technology. So we have uh, we have talked with the vendors and other people. So actually, what machines are what we are giving for the patients? What are the treatment is giving by them? So also the doctors, also the technician, nurse. So every stakeholders, we have to go there. And we also make us when we make the syllabus, we go to them whether what is it okay for their um, when they are work in the field with the patients. So it is very challenging because everyone is not understandable as well. And I think that's the very important. I say much. It's a very special subject. So the is very scarcity country other countries so when we do this syllabus very updated technology and when the, we would expect from them outcome based educations and reality to the field then it is difficult we do not find any faculty so in that case in our upper region we in our upper syllabus we have started the blended learning that means the foreign experts from other countries also have this and the vendors will come here and we'll do the practical. So this is a very challenging one. We have done this. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, now, Professor Dr. Mohad uh, Fohad Hussain, you can continue. Okay, thank you very much. Are you listening me? Yes, sir. I can listen. I'll give you a short introduction about yourself and then share your slides. Okay, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, I am Professor Dr. Mohammad Farhad uh, Currently, I am working at Bangladesh University of Textile, which is called Botex. is situated uh, in Dhaka. Uh, my current position is uh, the director of uh, IQC. You know, IQC is the Institutional Quality Assurance Cell. So now I'm going to uh, talk about the learning outcomes assessment for science and technology based curriculums actually this is very tricky things how we can uh, assess the students work in outcome based curriculums now uh, last few couple of years we are working on this but still we are struggling uh, however we are working and uh, doing progress anyway and uh, now uh, I shall show a uh, few slides, very few slides, because uh, so far I got the Professor Hassin also mentioned some uh, things that are similar to my area as well, uh, because uh, this degree is also engineering degree, biomedical engineering degree, and our degree is based in engineering and specification 
uh, specified area is textile engineering. So now I want to focus on uh, uh, three things. Uh, and number one is learning outcomes, then the, the assessment of learning outcomes, and then the curriculum design. You know, learning outcomes is just what uh, we are expecting from a student. Uh, that means uh, uh, how student will perform and uh, uh, how a student can behave in situation. And these things are, uh, are identified as doable, observable, and measurable, and assessable. These four components of learning outcomes we are expecting from our graduates. Now uh, you see uh, what are the learning outcomes. For example, if I give an example of Abbott, uh, it has uh, uh, 11 learning outcomes. And uh, you know, uh, in our country, there is two accreditation bodies. One is uh, BIAT, Board of uh, Engineering and uh, Technological Institute uh, Education, uh, which which are uh, which is working for a long time to recognize the uh, engineering program and uh, this bite has uh, the 12 uh, learning outcomes and another uh, organization which is Bangladesh aggression council which is a government organization it has also the similar type of learning outcomes and these learning outcomes, uh, the BIAT is uh, working only for uh, engineering education and technology education, and they set uh, 12 uh, learning outcomes. And in uh, engineering program, to prepare a curriculum, spe uh, especially the way OB curriculum, we need to address these 12 things, and we need to incorpor incorporate this uh, 12 things and how uh, we can uh, achieve this uh, learning outcomes. You see uh, the employers, you know, the some graduate attributes that are expected from the employers and uh, these things are very important. Unfortunately, specifically in our country, most of the universities are uh, higher educational institution, they are not aware of this and they are not uh, aware to incorporate these things in the curriculum. But these are the very important from the uh, employer's point of view. So uh, I shall discuss how we can incorporate these things in the curriculum and learning process. You know, uh, there are many learning outcomes we know, but uh, if I summarize this and uh, if, I if I want to show this pictorially, you see the base in textile engineering program, maybe they have the, it has the uh, nine outcomes. And if I say the diploma in textile engineering program, uh, this may be the seven learning outcomes, program learning outcomes. And uh, how, we can uh, incorporate this in our curriculum. This is a big question uh, because uh, in traditionally, we only focus on the uh, knowledge and our curriculum is content-based. And we, when we want to uh, shift this uh, content-based curriculum to OB curriculum, then we must address these things that what outcome we want to achieve. Here you see there is there are three components uh, we address for, to incorporate in the OBE curriculum. Number one is that the laboratory session and internship. This uh, will cover the psychomotor uh, domain and uh, co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Uh, this also uh, this will cover the effective or attitude domain. So if we can uh, incorporate these three things in our curriculum and uh, uh, allow the space for the uh, for these three things, we 
and we expect that uh, the student outcomes will be achieved. Now, uh, I want to uh, say something about the assessment of learning outcomes. That means how we can assess the students' learning outcomes. This is not very easy task, very difficult task. Uh, traditionally, we, we take the examination, especially the theoretical examination to assess the knowledge of the students. And uh, we take the, uh, we take the uh, experimental job to assess the uh, practical hand skill of the students, but problem is the soft skill. How we can achieve this soft skill and how we can assess this soft skill. This is a big problem. I think uh, still now there is no specific uh, assessment process or assessment tool to uh, assess the students attitude or uh, effective domain criteria. Here you see there's some learning outcomes. Uh, we can propose the teaching learning strategy for this learning outcomes and assessment strategy in the right column. Knowledge, we can assess this uh, by taking written test and quiz, practical skills. We can uh, assess this, uh, the student's work and uh, experimental job. Problem solving and scientific skill. Uh, we can take the presentation and essay writing. And communication skills, we can take the presentation. And social skills, teamworks and responsibilities, we can take uh, the presentation and we can give a to do assignment, group assignment and project as well. Values, attitude and professionalism, we can take a written test and presentation and project as well and uh, and community service as well information management and lifelong learning skills we can take project and portfolio and managerial and entrepreneur skills we can give a project and industrial attachment and internship and leadership for leadership we can give a project industrial attachment and other uh, extracurricular activities. So for outcome-based curriculum, for designing an outcome-based curriculum, we should incorporate the, these things uh, for assessment of the students' outcomes. For uh, assessing the knowledge, you know, we have to prepare the question. Uh, we have to prepare the question based on the six component of cognitive area, cognitive domain. And usually uh, we, uh, we are uh, very used to uh, do the questions on the lower level area, but we need to move forward and move upward to incorporate the question for higher, uh, higher order level. So, uh, here you see the remembering uh, remembering streams. Uh, these uh, questions are mainly what who based uh, WH question based and uh, just uh, uh, very preliminary things we can assess. And understanding streams, we may uh, prepare the question, explain why, write in your own words, how would you explain like this to know about the understanding of students uh, and for applying streams uh, explain another instance where group by characteristics such as which factors would you change if what happens what questions would you ask of from the information given develop a set of instruction about that means uh, to know the applying capability uh, of students, we can uh, prepare, we can uh, make a question based on the uh, application of the, their knowledge. And analyzing teams. In that case, uh, we want to, uh, we want to know the analyzing capability of students and we want to uh, expect we want to expect the students can analyze any 
problems or any things based on their accord knowledge and evaluating or create streams this is the uh, highest uh, order uh, level and in that case students can uh, prepare something or do something uh, from their own based on their previous learning or knowledge and what uh, we can do and you know the for preparing the oba curriculum we uh, we had uh, made a, a several changes in our curriculum specifically if i give you uh, the picture of this what we have done for our uh, curriculum uh, you know uh, currently there are uh, many things we need to change because the university grants commission and uh, the bangladesh accreditation council and by it and our existing university there are some difference in many areas for example face to face class duration ugc recommend 60 minute and by it recommend 60 minute however in our country there are some university they follow 50 minute or uh, like this and uh, the total credits for uh, undergraduate engineering program ugc recommended uh, the 160 to 170 but bangladesh national qualification framework which is declared a uh, few months ago that uh, this uh, this covered 140 credits and by it say it's it is uh, 130 credits so we have to uh, we have to take a, a concrete decision of what uh, credits we should to offer for the students and we decided to uh, fix our credits 140 to 150 because currently our total credits is 166 and another thing so you see there are a difference uh, and uh, one credit course is how long time student will attend the class that means what is the learning times face-to-face -face learning times for one credit currently uh, this is 15 hours 15 hours for one credit and for laboratory uh, this is uh, 21 hours however by it says the laboratory should be 28 hours so what we need to do to cover both ugc and by it we have taken uh, considered uh, the 14 hours for one credit for theory courses and 28 hours for uh, laboratory courses and 70 hour per credit for internship and final year project usually uh, we uh, give the three credits for this uh, project but uh, uh, currently for ob we proposed six credits for this final year project and industrial uh, attachment Currently, it is three credits, but uh, we proposed it should be six credits because it's uh, at least two months long, uh, long uh, learning time. So it uh, covers uh, at least 400 hours. And semester week, currently it is uh, 15 weeks, but uh, we propose. Fourteen weeks is only for the lecture period and extra one week. You see, we also proposed for OB curriculum fifteen weeks. However, first seven weeks for uh, classes, then one weeks for extracurricular activities and co-curricular activities and community service to learn the effective domain to cover the effective domain. Because in our curriculum or syllabus, there is no specific. Uh, learning time or specific uh, focus to cover the extracurricular activities that's why we proposed one week 
one week uh, inter one week mid term uh, break for extracurricular activities community service and uh, lifelong learning so this is a big change for uh, our curriculum and we also since this is an engineering program we also propose the uh, at least 30% should be the laboratory or practical courses and 70% uh, will be the theoretical courses and marks distribution uh, we also propose uh, that uh, in course assessment should be 50% and final uh, assessment should be 50%. Currently, this is uh, just 28% for in course and 72% for final. So we have taken a big change. And another thing in uh, designing the OB curriculum. Hello, uh, sorry, sir, for interrupting. Your time is almost up. So please, sir, wind up your session. Okay, just uh, one minute. We also okay, focus sure. on other things that, that uh, we want to, wanted to cover the different branches of uh, courses. That means GED, general education, language and humanities, we uh, kept it six to 10%. And basic science and mathematics, 15 to 20%. Computing and allied engineering, six to 12%. With the studies and management, it is five to 10%. General textile courses, this, this is common for all the department. It is 20 to 30% based on the nature of the program. And the departmental major courses is 20 to 40% based on the uh, nature of the program. And in total, uh, this D and E will not be the more than 60%. And uh, some... Uh, Compulsory course we also offer the history and emergence of Bangladesh, sustainable textile production and industry four in textile industry, research methodology, academic writing, professional ethics and psychology, and uh, design project. These are also incorporated in our OB curriculum. So uh, here I wanted to show you a sample curriculum, OB curriculum. Unfortunately, there is no time. And due to time shortage, I want to uh, stop here. Thank you very much. If you have any question, you can ask. Hello. Do you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Sir, you don't have any questions. So now, uh, sir, Anthony, you can continue. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, no problem. Okay. We are not listening. the video, sir. Uh, hello, sorry, sir, for interrupting. Yeah. Uh, sir, we can't hear your voice in the video, so it's better if you just share the slides. Okay, sir. Again, good evening, everyone. I'm Anthony P. Green Jr. from the Philippines. I'm a teacher at Imamela National High School and under the Department of Education. I hope my 
lights can be seen now. Okay, allow me to begin my presentation. I'll be sir, sorry for you. interrupting. Your voice isn't clear. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir, I can hear you, but your voice isn't clear. Once again, I'm Anthony Peebin Jr. from the Department of Education. No, sir, it's okay. You can continue. So I will be presenting to you our study titled Mathematical Food for Thought, Metaphor-Based Malice Integration, Statements and Statistics, and Probability Aid. Studies in 2016 and 2021 underscored the benefits of values integration and studies from 2011 to 2021 stated that metaphors are used in communicating values in discourse. With this, the researchers decided to focus on statistics and probability aid to break values integration statements for this mathematical strand by merging it with the values integration team order from the study of Grant et al. in 2017. This study aimed to create metaphor-based values integration statements in statistics and probability uh, Sir, your voice aid. isn't still clear. Could you remove and plug in the hand fees again? Can be heard, sir? Uh, sir, there's a lot of echo in your voice and we can't hear you clearly. Hello? Still, sir, I can't hear you clearly. How about now, sir? Yes, sir. Now I can hear you clearly. Now you can go. Thank you so much. Sorry okay, for thank you. Sir. No worries, sir. Allow me to continue. Specifically, this study aimed to create metaphorical mappings based on the statistics and probability eight key concepts and the general values integration team order. It also specifically aimed to determine values integration statements based on the constructed mappings. And it also aimed to create values integration statements based on the metaphors. Basically, the study made use of, of a post-positivist philosophy where knowledge is done through approaches considered by positivism as unscientific. The knowledge is constructed by human consciousness through language grounded on experience, and it acknowledges the reality that the truth can never be fully attained, but it can be approached. The methods here in this paper are deliberately decided upon by the proactive. I have considered two theories, the theory on metacognition by Divina Gracia in 2019 and the conceptual metaphor theory, which were used to come up with the methodology that I'll be presenting later. This is the conceptual framework of the study, wherein the variables involved are the key concepts in statistics and probability aid, the general values integration team order, the introspection of the researcher, literatures, all of which are needed to address the specific objectives and the main goal of the study. I made use of a three-level meta-introspection process. This is applying the post-positivist qualitative approach, where I made use of autoethnography, concept mapping, and literature research methods. So on the first level, my target output was the metaphorical, metaphorical mapping, and I observed the following procedures. First, I introspected on my personal experiences on teaching the statistics and probability eight topics and my personal views on the topics as connection to the value order. Then applying the concept mapping methodology, I coded the autoethnography entries and embedded these in the blank conceptual metaphor ma map. On the second level, the, the target output was the values integration metaphor. So employing literature research method, I made use of the codes on level one to filter contents of literatures. Literatures on statistics and probability concepts and order were coded, focus, focusing on their similarities. And the codes in levels one and two were compared and merged to construct metaphors. For the third level of meta introspection, the goal was to create the values integration statement. I made use again of the autoethnography methodology. I introspected on the previous processes and my views on the possible classroom discussions. The entries now were focused, were coded, focusing on character values. So the codes on levels one, two, and three were compared and merged to form themes. And from the themes, the values integration statements were written. In the interest of time, allow me to present to you one set of my outputs. So the autoethnography entry was placed there and 
the mathematical concept that I had to match with the values integration team was experiment outcomes, sample space, or event, or basically, or generally, these are called the basic terms in probability. And by coding my autoethnography entry, I've come up with the code order sequence of event for the values integration team circle. This is the level one, these are the level one introspection codes, basic terms and probability and order sequence of events. So from these codes, I filtered the literatures and I've come up with the following summaries. For the mathematical domain, experiment is an activity that can have different results. And these results are called outcomes. Sample space is the set of all these outcomes and event is a set of outcomes in an experiment. The summary of literature readings on the values integration theme order is this. We live in an order where there are causes and effects. Our actions lead to reactions and impacts. So by coding this, I came up with the level two code where I focused on the similarity that is both domains are shown in action leads to results scheme. So based on that code, I crafted the values integration metaphor stating experiment outcomes, events, and sample spaces, sample spaces are manifestations of order such that consequences follow after a particular action. Continuing on the third level of meta introspection, I again made use of the autoethnography entry. And from this entry, I was able to come up with the code. Again, the, the goal of the coding here is now to create or to identify the values. So the values that were identified in my entry are responsibility and prudence. So the theme that I've created by merging levels one, two, and three codes is this integrate responsibility and prudence through basic terms and probability. This theme guided me in creating the values integration statement. So all of these outputs that I have presented on my paper led to the following conclusions. The contents in statistics and probability aid can integrate prudence and responsibility, the importance of being orderly and systematic, proactivity, appreciation towards nature, and the importance of being goal-oriented. Allow me to present to you the knowledge that were constructed based on the three-level meta-introspection process. Experiment outcomes, events, and sample spaces are manifestations of order such that consequences follow after a particular action. May these concepts remind us that we have to be mindful of our actions and be responsible for the outcomes because these impact others and ourselves. The possible prompt for this is, how do you make sure that you are mindful of your actions and you are responsible for the outcomes of such? So these prompts can be presented in class for students to share. Counting strategies manifest order through utilizing systematic approaches that make determining the number of occurrences of an outcome in an experiment attainable and efficient. May this remind us to be orderly in the way we do things for us to reap benefits. Possible prompt, what is your experience wherein you did something orderly and you benefited from it? So I have come up with five sets of values integration statements and prompts, which I can't read one by one due to the interest of time. Continuing on my conclusion, these values integration statements are not the only ones that can be generated since the findings are limited to the researcher's personal experiences as supported by the autoethnography methodology and as per post-positivism. This also affirms the idea that learning mathematics can incorporate character values and that by, utilize, by utilizing the themes created by Grant et al. in 2017 and the concept of metaphors, mathematical statements for values integration can be created. For teachers, the statements and problems that I have, um, I have um, reached in my study for their statistics and probability aid class wherein they can capture actual students' responses to the formulated statements to determine the impact of discourse. They can also consider the following themes from my 2017 study for other mathematical areas. Like if they're dealing with numbers and number sense, they can consider integrating universal goodness and the presence of the highest good in mankind. If they're dealing with measurement topics, it's man's service for universal goodness, geometry, relationships, patterns, and algebra, existence of the highest good around us, and statistics and probability, which is what this particular presentation is about, we have order. The teachers can consider this process flow in constructing their knowledge. They begin with level one. They can ask themselves, based on personal experiences, identify the possible similarities between the mathematical contents and the values theme that I just presented. Then they code for keywords, come up with the level one output, then proceed to the second level. Using the keywords, identify what the literature say about the values theme. 
that were presented earlier. Then they will be coding again for similarities, come up with an output, then proceed to the third level where they can reflect on the previous processes and outputs and their personal experiences so that they can write their meta introspective answers to the main objective, which is to integrate values in mathematics classes. Then from here, they can code based on the studies goal and the three codes will be used to identify the themes by merging and relating them. And from the themes, the teachers can come up with a level three output, which is the knowledge that can be constructed and shared in class. The teachers can also consider sharing this process to the students so that they can construct knowledge for themselves. Students have to view mathematics as a means to strengthen one's values, and they have to actively respond to discussions to capture the applicability of the statements. For future researchers, I have mentioned earlier that they may um, employ the methodology used in this paper, and they can conduct a quanti quality study to describe the impact of the outputs of my study in actual classroom setting. How does this fit in the outcomes-based education? Well, basically, this study captures the humanness in education. I'd like to believe that the end goal for our students is for them to, uh, to really embrace their being human, that is, to maximize their full potential and to be of service to the community. Basically, this innovation also allows learners to become reflective individuals, making sense and creating associations between their mathematics education and their lives or roles as individuals. This contributes to a holistic approach because this touches on the effective aspect of the learners. May we all be reminded that since learning is lifelong, it pays to focus on lifelong values to create impacts on lifelong skills. After all, one's values serve as his or her main compass in achieving goals. Thank you very much and good day once again. Well, sir, you have, haven't had have any questions, so you can leave now if you want to, sir. Thank you very much, sir Musa.